Okay, class, in this video, we'll learn how to set up a transfer function for a multiple input and a multiple output mechanical system. And then we will use MATLAB to solve the problem based on the transfer function. So for this kind of problem, it's always start with a math model. So we need to set up math model for a mechanical system. We need to set up the math model based on f equals ma. And then for a two input, two output system, we'll get two equations. So once we get the two equations, we'll do Laplace transformation for the two equations. And then we'll get, and then we can solve them. We'll get y1 over u1, we'll get y1 over u2, and then y2 over u1, and then y2 over u2. And then four will be our transfer functions. With transfer function, given any input, we can get the output for the system. Okay, so now we work on an example, show that how it works. Okay, so for the problem we have is, there's a quiz problem in our class, and we have two masks connected by two springs and also a damp damping B. And the input is, well, at the bottom, the P will move, will move, and based based on u, u will be a sine waveform. So u, the input displacement p, will as a function of t sine wave. So it will go like this. So imagine that if p go like this, m1 also go like this, m2 will also go in a sine wave format. And the problem is to calculate the output. What's the specific form for? output x and output y. So we have input u, we want to get output x and y. So now for this problem, we'll start with math model. And by using f equals ma. Okay, we have two maths, so we'll set up f equals ma for each of them. So for m1, Acceleration term is m1, so x dot dot, this acceleration, dot dot represents second derivative of displacement, which is acceleration. And then we have three forces, one, two, three, which will be minus k2, x minus y, notice k2 is connected to x and y, so the difference determines the length change. And for k1 is minus k1, x minus u. So k1 to connect to x and u. And for damping term is minus b times velocity x dot, first derivative is velocity minus y dot. Okay, this is our f equals ma. For the second equation, you work on m2. And similarly, acceleration equals Force, there are two forces connected. It's k2 y minus x and minus b y dot minus x dot velocity. Okay, so now we have two equations. We'll reorganize the two equations in a form that output equals input. The way we write it this way is because we want to get transfer function. Transfer function is output over input after a Laplace transformation. Okay, so now we reorganize that for output. We have x, y, so we move all x, y terms on one side. So we have mx dot dot plus b x dot plus k1 plus k2 x and then minus by dot minus k2y equals k1u. And then for the second equation, for the second equation, again, we put xy on one side, and we'll put x at the beginning. So we put x as beginning. For x terms, we have minus bx dot and minus k2x and then plus m2 y dot dot plus b y dot and then plus k2 y 
equal zero. Okay, and then we'll go once writing an output input form, we'll do Laplace transformation. We'll do Laplace transformation. So again to remind you that Laplace transformation will change use the x example will change x to uppercase x here lowercase x is a function of t in time domain after Laplace transformation will become uppercase x in s domain s is a complex number okay so for the two equations the first equation after Laplace transformation is m1 and the beauty of Laplace transformation is we can work all differential terms into uh, algebra terms. For example, the x dot dot will become x squared times x. Differential equation become algebra equation. And that's why we apply transform function. Okay, and then b as x and then plus k1 plus k2 uppercase x minus b as y minus k2 y equals k1 uppercase u. So after Laplace transformation, this u again will from time domain to s domain. Variable will become t from t to s. And for second equation, we have minus b s x minus k2 x and then plus m2 s squared plus that's y and then plus b s y plus k2 y equals zero okay and then we will have after laplace transformation we all have this all right like enclose array all right so that's what we have control c we'll move to the next slides top and here we'll solve this x and y once we solve x y which will be a function of u and y will be a function of u too and the idea is we solve these two equations we get two unknowns right so well you can manually solve it or you can use MATLAB. So in this class, we heavily rely on MATLAB. So we'll see that how to use MATLAB to get x, y. So if you use MATLAB, we need to write in a format that is a times x equals b. We'll write in a form that a is a coefficient matrix and x is a two unknowns and the b is an input. So for the problem above, this a is a coefficient of the two equations. This is m1 s squared plus b s plus k1 plus k2, and then minus b s minus k2, and then minus b s minus k2. And the m2 s squared plus b s plus k2. This is a, a is a coefficient matrix. And for x, well x is we have two input x and a y, a uh, two output unknowns. And then b is the input is k y u and zero. Okay, we need to write in the form. Uh, once we have a and b, we can get x. It's called x solution. By using the building building function MATLAB, it's a linear solver. I input A and B, we'll get this X solution. So this X solution will take a form for this problem is X has two com two solutions. Y is X will take a form as U times G one. Y will be U times G two. So G1, G2 will be our transfer function. And with the transfer function, we can, for, we know that's, which is the intrinsic property of a system, then we give any input, we can get the output. Okay, so now we'll go to my lab, see that how to use a linear 
so we're to get the transfer function. Okay, so first we need to define all the variables involved. Let's go back, look at all the variables for this problem. For this problem, we know that I assume m1, m2, k1, k2, e all has values. So what we have is m1, 1, m2, 1, k1, those look at again, 5, k2, 5, and b equals 1. And to solve the problem, we need to first define the two sim symbolic variables. One is s, the other is u. Okay, so and then we define the a matrix. A matrix is, go back to look at the a matrix. M1 times s square plus b times s plus, go back, k1 plus k2. In the first element, and minus b times s minus k2, right? And then that's first row with a separate by a semi column will go to second row. Second row is minus b times s minus k2, and then the last element m2 times s square plus b times s and then plus k2 okay this is our a and we define b b has two two rows so the first row is k1 times u the second row second row will separate by seven column zero okay and then we can get our solution okay so the A, the B, and then we can run this code. So once we run this code, see what we have. So this is as XS. So with XS will have two solutions. One is for X, the second one is for Y. Okay, and that means, so note, note that the transfer function is X divided by U. So if we get get rid of u, that will be our transfer function. So for the second row, it gets rid of u here, that will be our second transfer function for y. Okay. Now we have these two transfer functions. Now we have transfer function. And here we'll redefine it again. So I define s as a transfer function variable. And the g1 u equals this our transfer function for g1. Simply copy it here and get rid of u, that will be our transfer function. Right? So delete. That's our transfer function for g1. And g2, so copy the second equation, second solution. This is for y. Transfer function from u to y. Again when you Get rid of u. Now we have this two transfer function, and then last one is we can solve the problem by given a u input. Okay, our input here is uh, sine sine t. So we first define t. Let's see, we define the t from zero like to thirty, and then u equals sine t. And then we can calculate x and y for x, which is we use building function cos L S I M given transfer function given u tell the time window, we'll get x. And then same thing, g2, u and t will get x x and y, and then we can plot t as a function of x x oh. okay and then we'll go to r with the plot here function y oh. Oh. y and then go off okay i think i rhyme the code 
here's our result okay and then let's make it a longer or a bigger window let's see from 0 to 100 and that's the result we have this is expected so if we have at the bottom you will uh, take a sine waveform and the MYM2 will move that similar fashion. Alright, that's all we have for today.